Hey, greetings everyone. Lieutenant Colonel Allen West here and welcome to the Steadfast and Loyal Podcast. You gotta light them up before they burn it down. Better dig deep and put them in the ground. But on their hands, they're held back. Greetings, I'm Lieutenant Colonel Alan West. In my career from the battlefield of Congress, honor and integrity have always been my compass. When it comes to building a precious metals portfolio for my family, I choose United Patriot Corps. Their commitment to honesty and transparency aligns with everything I stand for. They care about our great country and focus on serving patriots from all walks of life. They've teamed up with veterans of the precious metals market to create a new kind of gold dealer designed to serve the needs of a new type of gold buyer. And that's why I know I can trust them when it comes time to buy my gold and silver. If you value honesty and reliability as I do, then join me. You know, sometimes you just get the feeling that the folks up there in Congress, they're like a hamster on a wheel. They're expending a lot of energy, but they're not going anywhere. They're not doing anything. And how does that relate to where we are right now? This whole border control legislation. And when I listen to people up there on Capitol Hill mainly Democrats, but some Republicans. I mean, the Wall Street Journal puts out an op-ed about how we've got to have this border control legislation. You hear the, uh, the Border Patrol Union leader, uh, you know, all of a sudden coming out and saying, we've got to have this border control legislation. The United States Chamber of Commerce, we've got to have this border control legislation. Everyone's saying, you've got to do something. Something has to be done. But what is the right something to be done? Because when I think about it, we already have laws in place. We already have a constitution. We already have a border. We already have a national sovereignty that we're supposed to be protecting. So what happened? Why, how, how is it that we got to this point where 8, 9, 10 million people that we know of, that we have quote unquote detained or we have apprehended, bottom line, we released them into the country. And then there's another one, 1 1.5, 2 million that we have no clue who they are or where they are. So how did we get to this point? And, and do we really need another piece of legislation? Do, you know, when I hear Joe Biden say, if they just sign this legislation, it empowers me to shut down the border. What a bunch of crap. And this is a G-rated show for the family, so I can't say what I really was thinking about saying. Because the person that started this whole morass that we're in is the person that's sitting in the Oval Office, his administration. Sure, there was a trickling of people coming across the border during the Trump administration, but it was unheard of. Record amount of lows for what was going on on the border. Then starting in January of 2021, willfully, purposefully, and intentionally, Joe Biden issued some 30 to 31 executive orders to undermine the sovereignty of the United States of America. All unconstitutional. Complete violation of the Constitution. And on top of that, now we, we're just giving all of these taxpayer funded benefits to people that are here illegally, people that do not have a right to be in the United States of America. Don't don't give me this stuff about, you know, no borders, no walls, no USA at all. That's what Antifa in a march in Washington, D.C. was shouting when Trump was the president. 
That's treasonous. So this whole thing about we've got to do something. Yes, let's do something. Let's tell Joe Biden to go back and reverse the things that he reversed. That's it. Go back to what it was before he came in office and started all his executive orders and, and rescinding all the things that Donald Trump had done to secure the border. That's it. I mean, seriously? You want to pass this piece of legislation that says, oh, we have a trigger point. When we get over 5,000, then we'll shut down the border. Liars. It should be zero. And furthermore, why should I trust this president? And when you read this legislation, there's all kind of loopholes you can get out of it. And this is the thing I want you to know. They passed this into law. Okay, first of all, it's not going to happen. It's, it's not even going to pass the Senate. This is all a political charade. But if they were, if, if, if this were to all go as they have planned and it gets signed into law, I guarantee you, if it's Donald Trump or any Republican becomes the next president, they will hamstring them in trying to repeal it. That's what's going to happen. So we're locking ourselves in to say that, yep, you know, every single day we can take 5,000 and then we shut down the border. But then the next day we can take 5,000, but then we shut down the border. So what happens if you're illegal immigrant 5,001? Well, you just take a number like you're at a layaway or, or at a store. You take a number and say, hey, I'm number one for tomorrow. And it just continues to perpetuate itself. But I don't even believe they shut it down. Here's the bottom line. This issue of the border is now the number one issue for 2024. The Democrats realize, oops, we can't hide it anymore. You know why you can't hide it anymore? Because in New York City, a bunch of single military aged males beat down some police officers. They were arrested. The DA there, Alvin Bragg, let them go. No bail, posted, nothing. Just let them go. <laughs> and these dudes hop a bus and they're heading out to California. Then they get them in, in Arizona and now they bring them back. They should be deported. And first of all, how do we even know who they are? Because most of these people, they dump all their identification and everything before they get apprehended by our Border Patrol. And they just get processed. They, I mean, you know, because if you've been paying attention, they get put on airplanes. They have special lines. They don't have to go through security checks. They don't have to have ID. West, let me try that. Hey, man, I'm bypassing TSA. No, you're not. I'm an American citizen, former member of Congress, 22-year veteran of the United States Army, combat tours of duty, and you're telling me that a person can be in my country illegally? and they can bypass security and get on an airplane, no identification. But yet, you want me to go through all those rigmaroles? See, that's why I cats out the bag. And so this whole political charade, as I talked about, this is about the Democrats saying, somehow, we've got to put the Republicans on the blame line for this. So let's come up with this hokey-pokey border control legislation thing. Let's co-op useful idiots and tools like a former colleague of mine from Oklahoma, James Lankford, to go along and get along with this. Because then we can say uh, the Republicans, they're to blame. They're the ones not allowing us to pass this border contr control legislation. You know, President Biden can say, oh, by the way, I, I would really shut down the border, but they didn't pass this border control legislation, so I can't do it irregardless of the fact that you're the reason why we have this open border policy, Mr. President Joe Biden, who can't remember that French President Mitterrand that he just mentioned, you know, recently at a fundraiser in New Nevada, he died 30 years ago. So I don't know what he's talking about when he said that, you know, French President Mitterrand, you know, told me that it's great to have America back. <laughs> Maybe Joe was at a seance and he was talking to spirits. 
But the absurdity of this thing, saying that we must pass something that continues to further undermine our national sovereignty, is ludicrous. And then on top of that, the billions of dollars that they want to spend in this bill, just a teeny tiny bit of it goes toward our border. It's really a border security bill for Ukraine because that's where most of the money is going. Oh, we're going to get 2,000 more Border Patrol agents. Why? Well, 2,000 more Border Patrol agents will be needed to help process the 5,000 illegal immigrants that we're going to allow in every day. And then we shut down the border. And, you know, number 5,001, he gets in line first so he can come in the next day. 5,000 a day, illegal immigrants in the United States of America. 365 days in a year. You do the math. So they're not shutting down the border. They're not stopping anything. They're just running the same old beltway two-step and trying to get us to fall for it. I mean, even now in New York City, you got the rapper Fitty, or Fitty Cent, whatever he's calling himself today. He's challenging the mayor of New York who's talking about spending $58 million to give illegal immigrants there in New York City a debit card. Who's paying for it? The same people that had their kids kicked out of school so that the illegal immigrants could come into their school. Those same parents that had to go and try to find daycare or they had to call in that they couldn't go to work because they kicked their kids out of school so that they could shelter illegal immigrants. That's why the Democrats are saying we got to come up with something. This Trojan horse that Brandon Judd, the Border Patrol Union president and the Wall Street Journal editorial board and the Chamber of Commerce have all sold out saying we, we got to have this. That's like saying, you know, I got a sucking chest wound. Why don't you put a Band-Aid on me? That, that'll that help stop the bleeding. No. We have a sucking chest wound at the border. And it's self-inflicted by, again, the President of the United States of America. And all the laws are there. But these guys have disregarded, dismissed all the laws. And, and people saying, well, you know, uh, this foolishness about impeaching, you know, Mayorkas. If you are lying to the American people, if you are not upholding your constitutional duty and responsibility to protect the sovereignty of the United States of America, to be the Secretary of Homeland Security, you're letting single military-aged males buy the millions into this country. Yeah, you shouldn't have that job. Now, will that make a difference? No, because they'll just be replaced by someone else that continues on. But the point is that you shouldn't have the job. What happened to responsibility and accountability? If I have a job, if you have a job, and you're screwing up in that job, you're not meeting the task and purpose and the duties and responsibilities outlined in that job. And furthermore, you're lying to your bosses about the job that you're doing. You think you're going to keep that job? So Alejandro Mayorkas should not keep his job, the job that we, the people, are paying him for to do, taxpayer money. So I, I agree that he should be impeached. Will that make a hill of beans to the other side? No. I believe that you should start restricting the funds of the Department of Homeland Security, like the DOJ, too, several others. That's the power of the purse that you have in the House of Representatives. That's how you get people's attention. But somehow we've got to hold people responsible and accountable. Think about the woman, elderly woman, who was being dragged by like a, a little motor scooter or whatever. An illegal immigrant tried to take her cell phone. She's being dragged down the street. First and foremost, how did that illegal immigrant get a motor scooter? 
or, or whatever the, the little transportation d vehicle he had. How do you get that? Oh, well, I mean, you know, you got people like the governor of Pennsylvania, Governor Shapiro, saying we want illegals to have driver's licenses. And under the motor voter law passed by Bill Clinton in 1996, next thing you know, they'll get registered to vote. Does this border control legislation stop that? Does this border control legislation say that there are penalties, there is punishment for declaring yourself a sanctuary city? Nope. Which is, again, undermining the sovereignty of the United States of America. To say that if you're here illegally, you can hide out here and, and we won't turn you over, turn you in. See, this border control legislation that all of these folks are cheering on, Wall Street Journal editorial board, Brandon Judd, the president of the United States Border Patrol Union, the United States Chamber of Commerce, all these political elitists, it doesn't protect the American people. It doesn't keep us safe. At a time when Joe Biden and his cronies over at the ATF, they want to completely disarm us. So that I guess you will have more women being dragged down the street. You will have more police officers being pummeled and beaten by roaming gangs of single military aged males who have nothing else to do. Oh, let's give them jobs. Right. Jobs that should go to Americans and getting Americans off of the poverty rolls. Oh, but this bill takes care of the asylum rule. I understand what asylum means. Asylum means that if you are persecuted politically or religiously in a country, you get out of that country and the next country you come to, that's where you claim asylum. You don't go through six or seven different countries because you just want, well, I want a free cell phone. I want a taxpayer-funded debit card. I want a nice hotel room with free food. Nah, that's not seeking asylum. That's just you taking advantage of people that don't believe that the United States of America is a sovereign constitutional republic. So I'm here to tell you right now, thumbs down on this border security legislation. I had a little town hall article that said, we don't need no stinking border control legislation. Maybe you remember the movie from 1948, I believe, Humphrey Bogart, The Treasure of Sierra Madre, when the guy said, badges? We ain't got no badges. I don't need to show you no badges. We ain't showing you no stinking badges. Well, I don't want any stinking border control legislation. What I want is you, Joe Biden, to stand before the American people. Maybe you'll mumble and bumble it along. Maybe I have to hold up some cue cards for you. But I want you to stand up and say, I screwed up. Every single one of those executive orders that I did starting back in January 2021, I'm going to reverse them. I'm going to secure the border. I already have the enumerated power and ability to be able to do that. I'm going to protect the American people. I'm going to deport, first and foremost, the single military age males that we have in this country and then start making sure that we clean our streets. I'm going to stop releasing violent criminals back onto the streets. I'm going to hold these district attorneys that George Soros back accountable. That's what needs to happen. Will it happen? Nope. What do the Democrats want to happen? Put the Republicans on a blame line. When they know completely this has nothing to do with politics. Well, yeah, it does. The politics of them realizing that the American people see who is responsible for not securing the borders of the United States of America. Hey, look, God bless the people over in Ukraine. I understand a sovereign nation should not be invaded. But that didn't happen under Donald Trump. 
It happened during Barack Obama. Barack Obama sent socks and MREs. It happened during Joe Biden because they see the weakness thereof. Peace through strength is a very relative term that Ronald Reagan coined and it still has relevance to today. But continue to send billions upon billions upon billions of dollars and, and try to fear monger the American people and browbeat us down saying, you got to stop Putin. If we don't do this, you know, everything's going to be bad and everything's going to fall. Tell that to the woman that got dragged down the streets by an illegal immigrant. Tell that to the police officers in New York who were beaten. Tell that to the ranchers here in Texas that are seeing their ranches being overrun. Tell that to the people who live in fear every night along the border. Tell that to the young girls that are being sex trafficked. Tell that to the people that are being human trafficked. Tell that to the people here in the United States of America who have lost loved ones due to fentanyl, which comes from China, to the transnational narco-criminal terrorists known as the cartels and then fed into this country. This border control legislation does nothing to stop any of that. It certainly does nothing to stop the invasion of terrorists into this country. My message is very simple. We have people in Washington, D.C., Republican, Democrat, they've forgotten who they work for. They've forgotten who they're supposed to protect. They've forgotten what they took an oath to support and defend or to uphold the laws thereof. That doesn't mean you have to have another new law. Just uphold the laws that we already have. In this 2024 election cycle, you know what the American people are going to be looking for? It's not so much about looking for Republicans or Democrats. They're looking for people, men and women, who will be steadfast and loyal. Before they burn it down.